Hello, this is Nick of Captain Nick Knacks. Welcome to my channel. So today, I want to show you my pencil case brain or pencil burrito brain. Anyway, whatever I'm using for my pens. You've seen me do a video, a quick review of this pen case. And I'll link to it below in the description if you want to see it. But this one is the filed pen case. I don't know what it's called exactly, but I really love it. I bought this from a pop-up booth of Craft Carrot back in October last year during the BBJ launch. So I've been using this for almost a year now. And I must say, among all of the pencil cases I've tried ever since I was a kid, this is my favorite most favorite one so let's i'll do a more in-depth review of this pen case soon because it's been nearing it's nearing one year right so i want to do a more in-depth and like how much i love it how much i hate it and stuff like that more detailed review versus the first one that i did when i was using it for like a month so anyway so here's my pen case and so let's do a raid of what's in my pen case. So let me just remove this first. We'll go to this later. Let's go to the pens first. So I'll start with the one on my right. Let's go from right to left. Let me fold this so we can focus. Okay, so on the farthest right is my Zig Fudibiori brush pen. So this is the Zig brush pen that has a big, a bigish a fude tip so when you say fude it's like this it's not like a real brush but it bends like a brush i got this from a workshop by when kathy colors we did a sketching workshop and i got this there so i don't know where to buy it but this, the, the the workshop was in noteworthy so they probably carry these and i don't even know why i'm i don't like the big fude tips I don't know why I have this in my pen case. And then next is this Tombo Fudenosuke brush pen. I think this is I think this is small or fine, I don't know. Because it has it comes with two tips. So this one won't focus though. So there. I love this. This is my favorite. I don't know if it's pigment ink because it's in Japanese. But I'd like to think that it is among my other pens. I like this the best. Okay, so next is so the, we go to the white ones. So this one is a pen knife, a craft pen knife. I can't remember where I bought this. This is probably something I bought online. This is white and I really love it. It's a pen knife. It, when I bought it, it came with a set of um, blades. I love it because again, it's white. I have a similar one. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I have another one in like yellow orange which I bought from Baby Glider. So if you're interested in this kind of pen knife, you can buy one from Baby Glider. Okay, next is my jelly roll. This is a 05. I used to have a what's this? Uni. Is it uni? Yeah, uni ball signal seven. And I figured I wanna try a jelly roll because the uni ball signal Kinds is kind kind of translucent, and so I figured maybe the other white pens are better. So I got the jelly roll because it's an ode to my childhood, <laughs> my elementary days. And sad to say, I think I like the Uniball Signal more. My only problem with the Uniball Signal is that when you write with it, it, the ball of the pen kind of scratches away the the white ink. So you have to write really, really, really light. I can't remember how this pen performs actually. I haven't used this in a while, but it's just in my pen case. I can remember enough to say that I love the Uniball Signal, or I prefer the Uniball Signal versus the General. Okay, so next is a series of mild liners. So these are from the different sets of mild liners. And I can't remember where I got my mild liners. My first set of mild liners, I bought from Amazon and had a friend from who went to the US bring here to the Philippines. I think the last set, the fourth set, because back then it was just three sets, now it's five, right? I think. So the fourth set I got from, 
I can't remember. But like, this is from the fourth set, the orange one. This is my favorite. Actually, that fourth set is my favorite. I love all the colors. So these are ideally being used for my minimalist spreads, which rarely happens. Ooh, mosquito. Which rarely happen, but they're there in case I also need to highlight. Okay, next is my broken <laughs> um, coletto. I, I was meaning to fix this before I shot this video, but I forgot. So, the tip of my coletto is gone. There. I can't, there's no top anymore. But this is my coletto, and it only has two refills. It's funny, this coletto, I got this four years ago, five years ago, and I only got refills for it, like, last year. And... The, the refills that I have are er, is for an eraser and a mechanical pencil. So it's a mechanical eraser. I, it's really cool. Like it functions like your typical mechanical pencil and eraser, but it also like it's also like push down. It's really cool, and I love it because it saves me kind of saves me space for instead of bringing a separate pencil and eraser. Although to be honest, I do have a separate eraser in my pen case, but. I like the idea of having the eraser and the same pen. It saves space. The next is this. So we're now moving on to fountain pens. And so this is ranked according to how much I use them. And it used to be how much, how thick their tip was. It used to be like this is the thickest going to the thinnest. But this one is actually the thickest. And I put it at the farthest because it doesn't look as, as nice as the other ones. <laughs> but yeah, so this one is a Schaefer calligraphy fountain pen. It's one pen and then it comes with three nibs. And I'm really glad that the orange one is the thickest. It's called the B and I think it's a, it's a, if, it, if you put a numeric value to it, I think it's a 0.2. It's a 2 nib, 2 millimeter nib, something like that. So it's this one and it's orange. But all of the nibs in that set are actually calligraphy nibs or italic nibs. So they write flat. But I'm only using the this one. And then next is my pen BBS uh, Dual Tip Fountain Pen. This is really cool. Although I have a love-hate relationship with pen BBS. Initially I like it. It writes thin. It's a fine. It's an it's kind of like a middle easter it's like in the middle of an eastern and a western pen but this is an eastern pen it's a chinese pen it's very thin the the line is very thin but not as thin as the other f's of like pilot and sailor uh, but not as thin as well it's almost as thin as a western f anyway so i don't like thick nibs which is probably why i have a oh i don't like thin lines which is probably why i have a love hate relationship with pen bbs but i find that it has less saturation and it's a it's a dry writer so i tend to have to put wet inks on it and i had to adjust the nib for it to flow uh to the to the level of to the level that i want so there but that's for a different review why am i doing that now so <laughs> So that's it. Pen BBS, it's dual tip. I wanted to show you, but I got I started rambling. So it's dual tip. Get two inks. I love them most demonstrators. So I love that I can see the ink here. It's also a eyedropper, meaning there's no converter, there's no other filler filling mechanism to put the ink in except you know just inject it or use a dropper. So there. Next pen is this one. This is uh, this is another Chinese pen that I got from a dispatch for just like a hundred bucks. I think. And it's funny because when I checked my Shopee cart the other day, this this exact pen was in my cart for like months already. And it's funny that I got it from a dispatch for much cheaper. I think I got this for a hundred bucks. And it's a cheap Chinese pen. Um, it can take a cartridge or a converter. And it's an F nib. Most of the Chinese pens are F nibs. I really like this. It, this pen has really great heft. Uh, back then, I really like pens that are heavy or has heft. 
but now not so much because I write so much and it's they are heavy and they are painful to write with when doing long sessions but before I used to love pens that are heavy because it gives me more direction it it makes my handwriting better because it feels like the pen doesn't go everywhere and then the next is a pilot metropolitan that is orange this is if I'm gonna dispatch all of my metropolitans which I actually did except for this one so this would be the pen that would stay with me aside from it being orange it actually has a really good sentimental value it was given to me on my 29th birthday by my planner friends and it's a good reminder you know that I was just starting out with fountain pens back then I only had like one or two I think one so this was this is my second fountain pen uh, they gifted me this and I'm so happy because you know we found a pen and of course it came from friends so I had a different fountain I had a different metropolitan fountain pen back then it was a silver because that was the only one available when I bought online from everything calligraphy and that had a that had an M nib and when they gifted this to me it had an F nib because most of my friends are F nib writers so why is my camera like that so I changed the nib units so this is the M nib unit and then the, I transferred the F nib unit on the other pen and I gave that pen away to my husband who's not using it then I gave it to my mother-in-law uh, so that one writes an F so I got the nib unit and sw uh, swapped it so next is this pen this is another pen BBS and the story of this pen you know my pens have stories the story of this pen is that it looks so much like the fountain pen that I want. I can't remember the name. Oh my gosh, I forgot because I'm over. Not really over, but um, not. It's not on my high list anymore. I forgot the name of that pen. Oh, it's a it's a Delta Delta Oro something. I forgot. But it kind of looks like this uh, like in a quick glance. It's, I don't know what the resin type ebonite, I don't know. Celluloid there. It's like a celluloid finish to it, but not really. But it it's close enough. Like that Delta pen was a limited edition and I just saw it online. And I couldn't, I couldn't afford it. It's like 30 plus thousand pesos. And this is what? When I got it, it's around 2.5. But that's because I got it from a local retailer, retailer, buy and sell person in the Fountain Pen Palenque Facebook group. But if I go directly to Pen BBS, it's actually cheaper. This is called the Pen BBS something 866. Pen BBS 866 or the Goddess Pen, which I love the name. Goddess. So anyway, so this one is like one of those when I saw it like, okay, I have to buy this because it looks like the pen that I really, really want. So there. So that's the start of that pen. Although this is kind of annoying to me because it, so the nib, I thought it was a great nib at first. I guess it was just the excitement of having a new pen. But I found, and then I inked, I actually inked it with... Uh, shimmer ink and then that's why I thought it's a great pen because it could write sh with shimmer for a while but it would get stuck so I figured okay it's just that shimmer ink and then I changed inks and it's still soft and I had to fix the nib adjust the nib to write it to the flow that I want similar to the other pen BBS pen but I did this first because I had this first and then I I was writing something I had to put my pen down then my daughter came and started wrecking havoc on my table, dropped this, and actually at the same time broke my glass pen. So, and then the tines got bended and I had to bend it back and then it wasn't writing properly until recently when I had to really focus on it to fix the nib. So overall, I think this is the pen with the nib that I experimented most on. It's, this pen is the one that gave me confidence to modify nibs. So there. I have a love-hate relationship with this pen. So, <laughs> next is this pen. Shannon! And this it looks like... So this is the reason why I forgot about that Delta pen. It's because this is so near 
that pen and this one actually looks better than that pen. This is a Pelican M600 Vibrant Orange. Okay, so it looks so much better than that Delta pen. And this when this was released, so this was released 2018. Like around November, I think. Or, or October. I'm not sure. But it was released late. 2018. So when I saw it, I like fell in love and I just had to buy it and I had to save for it because it's quite pricey. So it has an M nib because I'm an M nib person. And at first, I didn't really like this pen because it was so light. Like, what the hell? Eh? It's so light. And everyone was so raving about Pelican. But like, oh, it has an excellent piston filling system. Blah, 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 blah. I don't like... It's not that I don't like piston fillers, but I like to syringe fill my pens. And to be honest, I think I already broke the piston because I can't move this part which is where which controls the piston. But it doesn't matter because I don't use it anyway. But there. Now I love it so much because it's so light. Because now I realized I can't write long paragraphs. I can't write for a long time. And by long I mean like five minutes. I can't write for that long. If I'm using a heavy heavy pen and this one is so light that's why you know at first i hated that it's so light like what i painted i paid this much for such a light pen like, but now no i love it i love that it's light i love the color i love everything about it and i want to ch actually change because you can notice all my fountain, fountain pens are orange i actually want to change to more um demonstrators pull out my demonstrators and put them back in rotation but that would mean i have to replace this pen and i couldn't so they're all staying orange until i can find it in me to change this anyway moving on next pen is this pen you heard me talk about this pen for a while this is a franklin christoph model 02 amber pen and among all my pens i think this has the most sentimental value of all and at least until I get back my pilot BB. But anyway, so this pen was gifted to me as a baby shower gift. Can you imagine? A baby shower gift from my planner friends. And it came in a time when I was so, so down because I was pregnant with my second child and I had to stop working because it was a sensitive pregnancy and money was so tight. And I actually had to sell my fountain pen, some of my fountain pens just, you know, to, to get by, sell my stuff just to get by. And I was really feeling so down. And then they gifted me this. And, you know, it, I don't know, I just really have awesome friends. So this pen is so close to my heart. Of all the sentimental values, that all, all the stories and sentimental values that my pens have, this is probably the most, um, I don't know, heart-wrenching, as the heart, most heart-wrenching story. Uh, but again, that's until I get back that pilot baby because that would have a more heart-wrenching story but i'll save that story for when i get it back and then last pen on the on the on the on this one is my twist me 580 lava and this is my first medium medium not non-beginner i don't know if i would think it's not a beginner pen because it's quite like, pricey but not that much. At, it, at least compared to a Pelican, like, you know. But anyway, so I love it because it's orange and it's a demonstrator. It's like best of both worlds. It's a demo. Because this one is a demo too and orange. But I like this bit. I like how this is... How the, the kind of demonstrator this is like everything's clear but touches of orange. But this pen is crazy because I haven't had it for like a week. It already broke down and I had to fix it and this is the pen that gave me the confidence to fiddle with my pens and this is like my third founder pen. The story of this pen is that I asked a friend to buy it for me. She offered, actually you know I have awesome friends. She offered, I really wanted this pen but I couldn't afford it yet. She offered to swipe her card for this pen and then I just pay it in installments. And I was like, ah. So, but yeah, I accepted her offer. I mean, yeah. So, I, and, and I didn't get this pen right away because I had to go to her place and I didn't have the time. So, I got this pen like a week after she bought it. So, warranty is off. Like, if there's something wrong with the pen, we can't give it back. 
the thing is, the nib had a problem. It was such a dry writer. I haven't fixed it yet. I probably should, you know. It was an EF nib because back then, I was also on the FEF bandwagon. Because <laughs> all of my friends wanted those nibs. So I was like, okay, let's try it. But I realized, you know, I'm really a medium person. But anyway, so the nib was skipping. And I thought, first I thought it was the ink, but I got better ink. And it's still not writing properly. So I figured I'd just buy a new nib for it. And I got a 1.1 nib. So this one is kind of an italic nib. I don't know if I'd call it italic, but it's, um, it writes a flat line. So this is my first stub nib. And I love, I fell in love with stubs right away. And this is hands down my favorite pen. Like of all my pens, it has, it's a little heavy, but not as heavy as the Luwashi. It has great heft, although it's kind of tiring to write with it because it is heavy. But this is my favorite pen. At least aesthetically, it's my favorite. And I don't know, just there's just really good vibes with this pen, even if it broke. Oh, so the story when it broke was the, the piston got stuck. And even if I move the, the thing that moves the piston, it got stuck and dislodged from that piston unit so it got left inside so I had to dig in with pliers to get it like no, long nose pliers to get it it's crazy I felt like I was operating on a planet pen and I had haven't had that had this pen for like a week yet it was like two days into using the pen that, that bad that bad so and I guess well twist me so far is for you know not that at least back then, I don't know if until now that some parts really break down. But so far, so good. Nothing's cracked or anything. Just that piston wasn't um, aligned properly. But now it's fixed. I fixed it. So there. So whew, that took long to go through my pens. And then next is this um, detachable pen case. Let's just go through this quickly, I hope. So. There's the inside. So let's go through. So these are the ones that can't fit the garters or doesn't have space. So first is this. You'll see me do a um, review of this soon. So this is Zig 2 Way Glue. It's how you make uh, something repositionable. It's two way because the first way is once if the glue is still wet and you stick something on it, it has a permanent bond. But if you let it dry, it became it becomes like a temporary bond or if you put it on paper it's like it's a sticky note my daughter is away okay next is this retractable what do you call this white out no retractable well it's correction tape there it's a dong uh can you read it it's a retractable dong uh Correction tape. I love it. And aside from the fact that, you know, it's kind of a demonstrator. Like, you see the inside. And it's orange. And it's retractable. Because the thing, my problem with correction tape is that some of them don't have covers. And some that do have covers, you know, you tend to lose the covers. So, there. The next is my scissors. I have two, actually. This one is for flat lace. So I haven't used it in years. Because it sucks, like there's, it's not sharp, it's so dull. And then this one is a white one from Muji. I love it because it has a cover, so it's a safety if my kids go through my pens, my pen case. Next is a ruler, oops, and some trash. <laughs> a ruler for bullet journaling. And then next is okay, you choose what's next. Then. Next is this. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is a Tombow Pit Slide Clear Glide. Clear Glide something pit slide glue tape it's a glue tape hi. hi and so what it does is that it's like double-sided tape but a little weaker like you can it's kind of repositionable it's that weak the adhesive is that weak but i love it because it just it works like correction tape like you just slide it there and it, it puts glue next is this tweezers uh, i talked about this this week i'll link to it below Actually, I'll link to all of the videos that discuss some of these things in the links below. But this is my EK Tools um, craft tweezers, precision tweezers. I love them. And then next is... Oh, this is my other ruler. Metal one. So I have two. 
This one is a metal bookmark and another is plastic. I tend to use the plastic more because it's see-through. But I don't know why. I like this one because if I need to cut washi or something, I need to use a knife, craft knife or this one. I can use a metal and not damage my plastic ruler. So next one is this. Let me fix my camera first. Okay, so next is this gyro cutter, my favorite, favorite, favorite tool. So it's there. And then next is, so this is a an eraser. It's from Tombow and it, 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 like you turn this and it gives you more eraser. So I, like, I like it. And then I have two paint brushes. One is a zero, oh, a one, and this one is a four. For when I watercolor. I love this. This is a silver silver fox I forgot silver something silver hmm. silver portable brush pen I love it oh no not a brush pen portable watercolor brush so I love it it's so small but you can put it like this and now you have a long brush and I love the color black and gold so elegant and then last but not the least is a syringe for when I need to clean something or refill, it, refill an ink. Although I don't have spare ink here. Sometimes I put spare ink. But sometimes I don't. So, there. Okay, baby. So, there. So, that's my pen case raid. Let me know in the comments what's on your pen case. Like, show me a picture. Or, you know, tell me in the comments. I'd love to know what's inside your pen case. And what do you think? Am I exaggerating? Exaggerated? Exaggerated? But I have so much stuff that I bring with me on a daily basis inside my pen case. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And with that, thank you for watching. Bye! Say bye, Lily. Bye! Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell button on the side to get notified of new videos.